What's up, bear? You being good this morning? Are you being good? Oh, you smell funky, boy. What have you been eating? Oh. Well, what's up, guys? This is Daniel from Arms Family Homestead, and we haven't done a goat care and maintenance video in quite a while. So today, we're going to be doing some immunization shots for our goats. So I told you guys back when I did my uh, goat medication video that they really only do one immunization shot for my goats and that's the CDT or CD anti whichever you prefer uh, Clostridium perfringes type C and D and tetanus so I give I, I talked about it in, in that video I give these shots to my goats once a year uh, it's just an annual booster and I do it within a month about a month before uh, they're due to kid and they're just everywhere goats everywhere goats everywhere so I give the shot about a month before they're due to kid it's just an annual booster and uh, giving it to them within 30 days of kidding season ensures that some of that carries over into the kid at birth so let's get these goats all herded up in here in the chute and uh, start giving some shots bear you smell funky today what you been eating man Bella, what are you doing in here? Huh? Come on, goats. Come on, goats. Come on, goats. Got the magic potion right here. Come on, goats. Come on, goats. Come on, goats. Good goats. Good job. Well, that was almost too easy. One little shake of the magic feed bucket. And look at that, everybody comes running. Let's give them some shots. So, as I said in my last goat medication video, there's two different types of injections. You've got intramuscular, which is the one we talked about goes down in the muscle. And then you've got subcutaneous or sub-Q, which is where you pull up a flap of skin and you give the injection under the skin. CDNT is a subcutaneous injection. Uh, I've just got a little syringe. We're going to pull two cc's. It's two cc's per goat. And like I said, it's just a once a year annual booster, basically. Clean, fresh needle. It's always, always suggested if you, you know, if you really want to be technical, use a clean needle for every animal. So I'm going to pull, I'm going to open my syringe, pull it open, and then push that air in there which allows me to I don't even really have to work to draw it out you can see that it's just drawing the medication out on its own so we're gonna pull two cc's I like to go a little bit past it and then push the air back in so I can pull out to three I don't know if that's focusing for you guys push it back up to two cc's and we're ready to go let me put my cap back on here so I don't poke myself All right, let's go get a goat. Who wants to volunteer to go first? Okay, we have a winner. Calm down. It's all right. It's all right. Go. Get away, dogs. Get away. Okay. So I got my goat. I always hold him between my legs. I try to keep their horns out of the way with one hand. Let me zoom out for you a little bit. Hold them between my legs. Pull their head to the side so I don't get their horns. They don't use their horns to uh, end up ramming a needle into me. And I just find a flap of skin here on the neck. Pinch it. Go right under the skin. You guys are crooked. It's just me. Y'all are kind of leaning like this today. Hang on. So it's a pretty easy process. Don't overthink it. Don't stress out about it. You're just going to pull that head out of the way. Find a piece of skin on the neck. Pinch the flap of skin. 
insert the needle and just slowly push the medicine in. And preferably not throw the needle on the ground like I did. But that's okay because we've got plenty of fresh needles. So who's going to be next? Come here. Come on little mama. It's alright. Come on. Alright. Number two, if she'll be still. I'm going to hold her head back so she don't use that horn to cause me to stab myself. Hold her nice and secure. Pinch up a little flap of skin. And just slowly inject it. Really? smell funky today but you're a good boy well that's all there is to it guys I, I really just want to emphasize and stress there's not a lot of work that goes into goat care and maintenance if you just go about it at the right approach have the right breed of goats some goats are much more low maintenance do your research if you're wanting to get into dairy goats figure out which dairy goats work best in your environment in your climate in your area and which ones have the least amount of problems um, that's why I have Kiko goats. Kikos are a, a, a meat goat. I just have a commercial meat goat herd. I like the Kikos because they're very low maintenance. And as you see, I don't use a lot of fancy equipment. I don't have squeeze chutes or head chutes. And I didn't spend a lot of money on building working pens for my goats. Now, I will say this. I'm, I mean, I'm a 200 pound, six foot two guy. I can kind of manhandle these goats pretty safely and not have a whole lot to worry about. You know, a smaller frame person may have a hard time getting out here and, and getting one of these goats by the head and holding them still to give them an injection. But I just wanted to prove that it can be done with one person with minimal equipment. Now, I would like to have some good working pins for my goats, uh, like maybe a head gate or a squeeze chute of some sort. And I may build something like that in the future, or I may look into purchasing something like that. I just haven't yet because, as I've said so many times, I try to do this as cheaply as possible. My goat herd is, is about as little input and as little money going into them as possible because there's not a huge profit like, what oh, bear? You just want more attention all the time. There's not a huge profit margin like there is on something like a like beef cattle or something that there's a much larger animal that sells for a lot more. So my goal is less input equals more profit at the end of the year. Now. My suggestion for most people, if you're going to be out here trying to trying to work your animals, trim hooves, give shots, worming, is to use two people. Find one person to hold the goat and another person can give the injection or give the, the medication. Um, one, one option that you can always do is find a place where you got a fence and a gate and run that goat into the corner and then close the gate back onto the fence and it kind of makes like a squeeze chute. Um, that's, that was one way to, to, to be able to kind of handle a bigger goat, like a billy goat or something by yourself. You can kind of corner them in there and they can't get out. Are, are you two camera hogs going to let me have some camera time? Or are y'all just going to hog it all up today? Huh? Y'all just want to be on camera, don't you? Oh my goodness. So, anyways guys, that's how I work my goats. That's how I give my shots and immunizations, medications, anything that needs to be done. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. But uh, goat care and maintenance is not hard. Taking care of these animals is really super easy. And that's kind of why I've always preferred goats over cattle or horses or, or larger animals, just because they're easy to take care of. Now, these two on the other end are not so low maintenance, are you? You two dogs are pathetic. Yeah, y'all need some people here to love on you all day, every day, don't you? Because when I come around and bring out the camera, y'all just want to hog all the attention. Huh. 
Well guys, thanks for watching. I hope y'all have a great day and we'll see you on the next video.